And after a few days, Jean Sher appeared in the pleasure district, accompanied by a briefcase with enough money to make the lady's eyes shine, and to the girl, he gave her a strange insect with a large one growing inside it. But in exchange of all these riches, he asked to have Mao Mao back. And upon returning to the palace, he meets with the emperor, and in the midst of conversations, the emperor asks what Jean Sher's decision will be. After all, he is taking care of his flower garden now. And then he notices that the emperor is a very shrewd man, unlike him because regardless of how much Jensher tries intellectually and in martial arts, he remains just a little above average in everything. However, his only advantage over others is his beauty, and seeing that everything he wants is out of reach, Jensher decides to conform and accept things as they are. However, he plans to use his beauty as a weapon to take advantage. And judging himself from the inside, Jensher feels that he is nothing more than a child walking in the Emperor's line, and so he decides to do as his lord wishes, and says that he will manage the inner palace, just to please him, after all this it's the only way he found to be able to choose his own path. And meanwhile at the Verdigris house, Mimi prepares Mamao's suitcase, and tells her to bring lipstick too, so that the girl can dress elegantly, but she says that she won't need that, as only courtesans need to look all dressed up, for them to work. And then Mimi states that she got a great job in the inner palace, so she should also dress nice to go to work, otherwise Mamao's clients will run away from him at some point. In in this she feels that her words are very convincing, besides Mimi knows very well how to treat a client, because even though she is old enough to retire, she is still popular because of her intelligence and ability to entertain her clients. And well, Perrin and Joka go there to wish him good luck with his work, and Mimi says that she would be very happy if Mao Mao brought some more rich clients from the inner palace, but the other courtesans emphasize that he must be a man with a lot of money. And upon leaving the Verdigris house, Mao Mao comments that he will return to an area of the palace, called the Inner Palace, a place where women are housed who are waiting to have the emperor's children, and as for her, Mao Mao worked as a servant low level, until he ended up attracting a lot of attention when solving the mystery of a newborn heir about to die, Gyokuyu's lady-in-waiting, and from then on she ended up getting into countless troubles by becoming a food taster, in which several things happened, leading to her dismissal. However, a short time later, Mao Mao was returning to the Inner Palace, as she ended up giving in to the temptation of the caterpillar fungus, given by Jensher, and although she sees that job as an extended vacation from the pleasure district, she doesn't feel good about leaving it, your father behind while he works, but at least the rules are very light this time, plus Mao Mao is no longer seen as a missing person by her family, besides her father had told her to do what she thought was best, and upon arriving at her father's house, he comments that she got a lot of things from the courtesans, but she just wants to make sure she takes her pestle, her grinder, and her notebook. But her father deduces that she won't be able to take these things, after all she is not a doctor, so if Mao Mao takes this, everyone will suspect that she is planning to poison someone, and upon hearing this, she despairs, because in fact, you will not be able to take these items. But her father reminds her that the decision to leave again was hers, and now it is too late for her to give up, so he believes that she can get permission to take these things to the inner palace little by little. But for now he tells her to go to sleep, because tomorrow she will go back to to work, and in the middle of the night, her father regrets her departure, claiming that the house will be lonely once again, but Mao Mao reassures him, and he says that this time she can come and visit him whenever she wants. And then he touches her head, and says that Mao Mao can come back to visit him as soon as he wants, and she remembers that they no longer have a mother, but still, she has a very charitable father, a noisy grandmother and a very lively group of older sisters. And at dawn she goes to Jensher, where he is surprised to see her all dressed up, and the lady of the Virgin Degrees house picks on her, telling the girl not to forget to bring more clients to her brothel. And with this matter resolved, they say goodbye, and in the middle of the trip, Mao Mao says that the fact that she is attracting a lot of attention is Jin Shi's fault, but he tries to say that she is only attracting attention because she is very beautiful, but he ends up telling her the sentence before finishing it. And after walking a little further, Jin Shi reminds Mao Mao that she can wear freckles again while she's there, and already in the inner palace, two men comment 
document that the manager of the inner palace bought a courtesan from the Vertigris house, that famous place that houses the three princess. And meanwhile, Mao Mao finally arrives at her destination, and Jin Shi says that they are at her house, and there will be her new place of work, and upon hearing this she is amazed, and says that she expected to return to the inner palace, in that Gao Shan explains that because she was fired once, it is difficult to employ her in the same job so easily, so she will work in the outer palace from now on. And then a lady introduces herself to her as Swearin, Jin Shi's assistant, and the lady explains that in that place there are two separate buildings, one with the office, and the other with the personal residence. And then Swearin takes her to her new room, and when she comes across it, Mao Mao notices that the area there is almost the same size as the room she used in the Jade Palace, however she believes that this room is still very good to be that of a servant. However, Jin Shi calls her to talk, and says that he has no plans to task her with servant work, so he puts some books on the table, and informs her that she will take the court lady exam. And the next morning, she puts on her clothes, which, by the way, were carefully made of cotton, to please her, and when she finds Swearin, she tells her that she went there to help her with her chores, but the lady says she's already finishing, so she would just help her serve the food. And upon seeing the kitchen empty, Mao Mao asks where the other assistants are, and Swearin says that there are none, as she couldn't let anyone else take care of the tasks she is responsible for, especially when it comes to the young master's food. Then Mao Mao asks if she always did all the work alone, and Swearin explains that she already had some girls helping her, but many things happened and they ended up not lasting long. And then Mao Mao deduces that one of them might have put an aphrodisiac in his food, or maybe they might have tried to steal something, but the lady puts an end to his doubts, saying that one of the girls forgot underwear in her closet. Then Mao Mao sympathizes with the situation she went through, saying that it must have been a huge headache, and after preparing the food, she calls Jin Shi to eat, and seeing him exuding eroticism, Mao Mao understands why no girl can enter his room, after all she would certainly throw herself at his feet. And well, Jin Shi tells her that that she can get a new room, if Mao Mao wants, and upon hearing this, she understands that this is her chance to get a fire and a well. But upon seeing her features, Gao Shan looks at her with a serious look, but says nothing, and Mao Mao asks Jin Shi to give him a stable with a well nearby, but Jin Shi refuses. And after that, he is left at home, as he is very busy, although he was always seen wandering around the inner palace, and well, she is taken to the east side of the area, whereupon the girl is amazed at the size of the place, and believes it will be very difficult to remember all the names and departments. Furthermore, she does not have a very good ability to remember waves that she is not interested in, so Gao Shan takes her to the water board, which in this case is the department responsible for taking care of rivers, dams and projects that use water. And analyzing the area further, Mao Mao notices that the inner palace had much more medicinal ingredients, and from this she deduces that her father must have planted all these herbs while working there, and upon seeing her distracted, Gao Shan Scolds her. After all, the girl will soon become a court lady, and therefore she should behave like one. And second later, she meets the lady again, and then she asks Mao Mao to take the coal to the office. And when she gets there, she notices that all the items are discreet and first class, and this makes her wonder how high quality she is. The young master's class. And when she leaves the room, Mao Mao comes across some court ladies watching her with an angry look, and she explains that in the outer palace, the court ladies are similar to secretaries, as they have qualifications, family inquiries, and good education, and this differentiates them from the women who exist in the inner palace, and it is for these reasons that they are much more proud than other common servants. And then they go to Mao Mao, and ask her what she is doing working directly for Master Jin Shi, and because she doesn't know what to say, Mao Mao asks if she is jealous, and the girl slaps him in the face. And when he sees that his first attempt doesn't work, Mao Mao changes his speech and says that Jin Shi certainly doesn't want anything to do with her. After all he's too pretty to want an ugly girl like her. And upon hearing this, the girls understand her point of view, but one of the ladies asks her why he would have hired her, and then Mao Mao takes out the wounds on his arm, and says that he hired her out of pity, because besides of external beauty, Jin Shi also has an equally beautiful heart. Then the girls retreat, and Jin Shi appears, demonstrating that he heard the entire conversation, but Mao Mao quickly leaves to do cleaning work. And at nightfall, she opens the box with the caterpillar she received 
greetings from Jinshu, and upon seeing her so agitated, Swearan asks the girl to be silent, and the next day, the test to be a court lady is administered, but Mao Mao did not pass. And when leaving the office, she comes across several herbs, which make her very excited, and then one of the court ladies comes to her, and says that the girl has no reason to be walking around there. And when she turns to leave, Mao Mao smells a smell of sandalwood mixed with something in her hair, and after that she decides to follow her path too, and a mysterious man stands from afar watching her steps. And on a snowy day, a noble-looking woman walks into the palace, after entering the gates with her four companions, she simply enters the main house without saying anything. She gives her hair accessories to one of the servants and sits on the chair in the center of the room, acting angry, and with Gyokuyo, she is interacting with one of her ladies-in-waiting, and they are talking about Mao Mao, and the lady doesn't believe that she is back, but Gyokuyo seems to be very excited about it, and is writing a letter for the occasion, saying that now that she is back, this is her chance. And meanwhile, the girl is planting new herbs, because where she is, unlike the inner palace, the outer palace does not have good medicinal herbs, and therefore, she feels that she must continue working hard to get good materials. But while she is busy with this planting, the housekeeper appears behind her, giving her a fright, and asks if she hadn't asked Mao Mao to clean the office, and noticing the hesitation he gave, Mao Mao uses the disappearing jutsu and runs away from there as soon as possible, quickly as possible to fulfill what was asked of you, and she feels that the housekeeper is a tricky opponent, and meanwhile, Jin Shi is with Gao Shan in the office, and they are in doubt, as they have received letters from Lady Li Hua's pavilion, and from Gyokuyo, and while they are at it, Mao Mao arrives knocking on the door, and after entering, Jin Shi asks if she knows the new pure concubine who took over the garnet pavilion in Aduo's place, and as the inner pavilion needs to educate this new concubine, they want Mao Mao to be her instructor, but she doesn't even take this hypothesis seriously seriously and asks if Jin Shi is joking, but he doesn't understand why she thinks that, and he even shows the name of the person who recommended Mao Mao, and when she sees Gyokuyo's name, she takes a step back, and when she sees that the other name that would have recommended her is Li Hua's name, she is in complete trouble, and she tries to understand why she was nominated, but when she remembers the advice she gave to the lady on how to please the emperor, she understands why, and with this bitter end, she is in charge of this complicated task, and upon seeing that she was nominated, dominated by two concubines, she feels that she cannot run away from this, but seeing how much she will receive for this task, she feels that the old lady from the Vertigris house will smile when she sees this. However, Jin Shi appears and sees how much she wanted to charge for her services, and still finds it too little, but when she was about to change the price, the housekeeper arrives, and doesn't let Mao Mao carry out the scam. And then Jin Shi looks at the carriage she was taking, and asks what's inside, but Mao Mao turns into an animal and thinks she she can't let him see her precious teaching material that's in her luggage. And with that he understands the message, and Gao Shan even tries to help her carry the luggage, but she says that there is no need, and thinks that if she needs to do this, she will go with everything. And in the inner palace, Mao Mao feels that it has been time who was there, and notices that that feminine atmosphere calms her. And on the way, many of the women there are in an uproar for Jin Shi, and he says that they are like that because they heard about the classes, but he turns to them and says that these classes will be for high-ranking concubines, and if they are not one, they can take a few steps back. And then they melt even with that, leaving Mao Mao surprised by the power of the eunuch in front of him, and then they enter the house, but Mao Mao puts him out, as he himself said that the classes are only for concubines. And she says that what will be said inside is a highly confidential secret of secret arts only for women, Kadia Damaseno from the Chinese Empire, and after putting them out, she sees the concubines gathered, and notices that each of them is still as well as last time, and the Lishu is still cornered in the presence of the other three, and finally, she notices Aduo's successor, the concubine Lulan, and Mao Mao points out that she appears to prefer this flashy southern style of clothing, also detailing her facial features, and she comes to the conclusion that based on her age, the emperor will probably give preference to visiting her at night, and she feels that even if the balance of the inner palace is maintained for now, it will only be for now, but she doesn't seem to care enough about it to worry, and then she introduces herself as the instructor of the day, and says that what she teaches there today, 
day must only be used in the internal garden and is extremely confidential and with that she distributes the teaching materials to them and starts teaching the women. And as they learn they all show all kinds of reactions from shyness, interest and even fainting on Li Xu's part apparently it was too much for the poor thing. And Lulan, in turn, didn't seem to care much about what was being said there. And meanwhile, outside, Jin Shi had his ear glued to the door trying to hear whatever was being said inside. However, Mao Mao opens the door and catches him awkwardly and catches him, immediately discovering what he was doing, and then he enters the place and sees each of their reactions again, and even Li Xu banging her head on the wall and saying that I couldn't do that. And Mao Mao notices that the two recommenders were satisfied with the content, Li Xu was screwing and Lao Lan. She still can't say what that woman is thinking, and so, she leaves the place without saying anything. And Jin Shi tries to ask Mao Mao what kind of lesson she gave, but the girl tells him to try to see about it with the emperor later. And meanwhile, in the Garnet Palace, Lao Lan is cosplaying as a generic villain looking at nothing by candlelight. And Mao Mao is still awake in her bed, but even tired, she still can't hide her excitement about her payment. And in the middle of the night, she hears an explosion in the middle of the palace and men running to the place. And she even thinks about going to see what it's all about, but when she thinks about the housekeeper picking on her, she shivers and thinks it's better to let it go. And at the sight of the explosion, Lachan was investigating the place and even though he managed to get something tracked, he keeps it to himself. And the next day, Mao Mao is wondering what happened in the morning and meanwhile, Jin Shi doesn't seem happy at all, and she notices that even though he's a eunuch, he works a lot in the outer palace, and when she continues her chores, she starts to collect the paper, thinking that selling it would be the best end for it. And seeing that she was going out, Gao Shan gives her a coat, and she notices that he is still as attentive as ever, and thinks it's a shame that he is a eunuch, but Jin Shi is jealous of this. And he starts saying it was Jin Shi Wo ordered him to do this, wanting to give credit for the action to his boss, but Mao Mao gets everything wrong, thinking that he can't even give a coat to a maid without his boss's permission, and in that, she thanks Jin Shi instead. And then she comments that easy to find herbs can be seen anywhere, but when looking for them in winter she notices that finding them becomes more difficult. And then Mao Mao wonders if that place would be suitable for sowing them, when she finds some flowers, and when picking up a bulb Mao Mao explains that it can be digested, unless the poison is removed. And when looking to the side, she notices Rihaku, but with a different belt than before, and when he goes to talk to Mao Mao, he appears to not know about her dismissal, and then she explains that he is one of the three lords of Nak Changwan. And as for Sister Bai Ling, Mao Mao states that many commoners work for half a year just to find her, so she decides to update him on her life, and explains that she is no longer working for the concubine, in which case, now she is working as a personal maid for a certain person. And when looking to the side, Rihaka notices that there is a lot of work to be done, and he explains that this season there is usually a small unexplained fire, but he guarantees that he is investigating the cause. And upon hearing this, Mao Mao wonders if this incident has anything to do with last night's commotion, and Rihaku explains that this fire is not a real threat to his life. Then she approaches the place, and he tells her not to get too close to the warehouse, and then she analyzes that the black coal has spread to the building next door, in addition, construction debris is lying everywhere. Nisi believes that Rihaku's suspicion is that the fire was set for criminal purposes, and not due to human error, and with that Mao Mao understands why he is investigating that incident. And she notes that if there were a fire in any warehouse, it would be inside the emperor's palace, which in this case is a generally peaceful country, but with all the events that are taking place, everyone is dissatisfied, and that's why the place suffers from attacks of immigrants sometimes. And upon seeing a burnt potato on the ground, Mao Mao discovers that the place was a food warehouse, and upon analyzing the place further she finds a pipe made of ivory. Then Rihaku catches up with her, and after making a brief analysis of the place and the things she found there, she runs to another warehouse, and then Mao Mao asks if he keeps the same items from the burned warehouse in that warehouse. And he says yes, so the girl takes an item from under the table and asks Rihaku to get it, a hammer and a saw, as she will try to do some experiments with this equipment. And after that, she sets up a box and pours the flour she got from the store into it, and then she covers the box, leaving a small square for the sample. Then the other eunuch appears with the spark she had asked for, and then she explains that they must keep their distance from the box, as the experiment she is going to do is very dangerous. However, he boasts about being a military officer and decides to stay nearby, whereupon the box explodes in his face, and Mao Mao saves him by throwing a bucket of water at him. And after that, she explains that the 
explosion incident was made with flour and the spark that caused the explosion would be the pipe she found in the warehouse. And Mao Mao suggests that someone entered the warehouse to smoke in secret and when closing the place, the fire would have come into contact with the dust in the air causing the explosion. So she suggests that he no longer smoke in the store and Mao Mao reports that he has already done something similar which made the old lady from the Verdigris house become angry with her. And the girl states that most of these cases of explosions and fires occur with lay people and as for the officer's cold, Mao Mao tells him to go and get treatment with a pharmacist called Luo Men in case his condition worsens. And having resolved the matter, she returns to her work and at nightfall, she takes the pipe she brought from the store and deduces that if she deals with the item she can sell it for a good price. But soon after, she notices that that item appears to be from the warehouse manager due to its luxurious details, so Mao Mao decides to just clean it and return it to the warehouse, and meanwhile a eunuch gets angry about something and says that can handle this situation too. And meanwhile, the eunuchs the comment on the fire incident, and one of them says he is surprised that Rihaku solved the problem, and he informs that there are rumors that the maid helps them solve some cases, in addition he reports that Jinshir visited Nakchangwan recently. Then the man who was observing Mao Mao becomes interested in the subject, and asks the eunuch to tell this story in more detail. And meanwhile Gao Shan goes to Mao Mao to talk to her, in which he gives her some data from an old case about a family of traders, and upon re Reading the document she realizes that someone ate puffer fish salad and ended up getting food poisoning. However, Mao Mao is enchanted by this and says she likes the thrilling sensation of numbness that the poison gives her, so Gao Shan says he can take her to a restaurant so she can eat this fish. And returning to the main topic, he says that he had already informed her about this incident a while ago and Gao Shan explains that he was involved in some business and recently an incident similar to that of the traders occurred after a former colleague asked him for advice. In this case, a bureaucrat who ate a pufferfish seasoned with vinegar ended up falling into a coma, so Mao Mao is interested in hearing more about this story, and so he says he can tell her, as he trusts that Mao Mao won't tell anyone anything. However, he asks if he can give up telling him the story halfway, and Mao Mao asks Gao Shan to finish the story if he starts telling it. In this he explains that the second seasoning put on the puffer fish was boiled puffer fish skin and meat, and upon eating this the bureaucrat fell into a coma soon after, whereupon Mao Mao asks if he would like to buy a puffer fish, and informs him that the most poisonous it's the one the bureaucrat had the misfortune to eat. And Mao Mao explains that depending on the type and environment, sometimes puffer fish meat can be poisonous, so Gao Shan associates this incident with the last one, in this case that of the merchant family. And he claims that the chef who prepared the food didn't use puffer fish, however the two people fell when eating such food, and Gao Shan comments that he loved loves eating raw fish, and pufferfish was on his list of favorite fish. But after the incident that occurred in the kitchen trash, he found puffer fish intestines and shell, but the poisoning victim stated that he did not eat the fish liver. In this Gao Shan confirmed with the two chefs that they used the puffer fish in the previous day's dish. On the day the incident occurred, both reported that they used another fish, so they claimed to be innocent of what happened to the victims, however no witnesses appeared to defend them. And in addition, the employee who ate all the dishes passed out half an hour after the meal, having said that Mao Mao comments that he was more involved in this incident than she herself was, and in her opinion, everything suggests that these two victims were indeed poisoned with the puffer fish. But in order not to make hasty decisions, Mao Mao asks Gao Shan to bring him more information, so he leaves the room, and Mao Mao comments that at this time of year it would be okay to leave the leftover food for a few days. And as for the report that other fish were used, she believes that this day statement is coherent, and in the midst of her thoughts Jinshir appears there to disturb her. And when she sees him she is very scared, he regrets this, and says that it hurts him to marry her, and well, as they go to another room, he comments that he became aware that Mao Mao was helping Gao Shan in a poisoning incident. And she explains that people tend to like interesting stories, and in her case it would be no different, so Mao Mao decides to talk less and leaves Jinshir talking alone. After that, she meets with Gao Shan and he gives her the recipe used 
by the chefs and informs her that it was recreated according to the testimony of a servant so it contains all the dishes prepared by the chefs. There she finds the pufferfish recipe and says that apparently there is nothing unusual with the preparation method that the recipe teaches, however Gaoshan says that the second mixing method is described in many different ways, however this materials do not have so many details. And Mao Mao deduces that this occurs because fish and vegetables are not available at certain times, and this means the recipe needs some modifications. And in the middle of the conversation Jinshu appears there, and upon hearing her say that she doesn't know something, he asks what exactly Mao Mao doesn't know, but she just calls him childish and asks Gao Shun the date the incident occurred, and he says it was about a week ago. There she comments that the ingredients used for winter vegetables would be radishes or carrots, and Gao Shun says that they also use seaweed, and upon hearing this she remembers that he had said that he likes different foods. So she asks him to find her a kitchen, and then Mao Mao is taken to a unit called Basin, and while they are in the mansion, Basin says he will take her to the kitchen as soon as they arrive. And then she notices that Gao Shun really always acts very quickly, and upon analyzing the situation further, Mao Mao notices that this is the first time she has seen a military officer, but she feels that he doesn't look at her in such a kind way, but in any case, for Mao Mao says he doesn't care about that. And well, when they get there, Basin takes her to the kitchen as agreed, and he informs her that after the poisoning incident, the place was never used again. Then a man invades the kitchen very aggressively, and tells them to leave, but Basin informs him that they have authorization to enter, and says that they are there for work, and then the man ends up giving in and allowing him to use the kitchen. Then Mao Mao asks who this guy is, and the cook says that he is the owner's younger brother, and he informs that his brother owns the mansion, so he went there to take control of the place. And returning to the main topic, Mao Mao explains to Basin that the kitchen tools and dishes were washed, and when checking one of the food containers, she finds a suspicious ingredient, but the cook explains that the owner ate this often, so know it's something poisonous. And meanwhile, the owner's brother continues to look angry and tells them to get out of there as soon as they finish what they need to do. And after hearing this they leave the place, and Basin asks why she retreated so easily, and Mao Mao shows that she collected some of the mysterious ingredient, and she explains that the harvest season for this seaweed is still far away. And that's why the seaweed is salty and cannot be kept, and Mao Mao comments that it would be of great help if Basin knew where exactly these seaweeds were purchased. And upon returning to the eunuchs, she presents the mansion's seaweed to them, and Mao Mao divided them into two bowls and washed them in advance, and after analyzing the seaweed basin proves that they were purchased in the south just as they already suspected. A and when asking the servant, Basin discovered that the owner harvested the seaweed in the middle of winter, and Gao Shan comments that these seaweeds are the same ones Jinshu usually uses too, so he believes they are not poisonous. But Mao Mao explains that they can be poisonous even if they are the same algae, as the people of the south may have to prepare the algae in a different way than they do. And she believes that a local merchant, to make money, must have purposely harvested the seaweed from the source, even if it was salty, and she explains that even though the seaweed is not toxic, there is a way to make it poisonous. In this Mao Mao explains that the eel is originally toxic, but if its blood is removed or heated, humans can feed on it without any problems, and in the case of this alga, it needs to be thrown into lime water to remove its toxins. And in her case, Mao Mao prepared preserved water with lemon to remove the poison, and then she eats the seaweed, which Jinshu gets worried and tells her to spit out the seaweed, and she says that by pickling the item it would make him edible, so Mao Mao was just testing whether it actually worked. And well, when returning to the main topic of the meeting, she comments that the problem lies with the person who suggested bringing salted seaweed to a merchant, and she deduces that in regions where people have poor eating habits, this seaweed must be an imported material, therefore it is natural that the risk of consuming it is high. And when explaining this Mayoma believes that she doesn't need to say anything more, as everyone certainly understood her and already knows how this case ends. And after that, Gao Shan says that the culprit for this was his younger brother, the fallen officer, because when a buyer was found, he confessed that he bought the item from him, and his brother would have done it out of anger at being treated with neglect, and for him the older brother was practically an obstacle in his path that should be removed. And upon returning to her duties, Mao Mao regrets not having been able to eat the poisonous algae, which is why she gets excited and wonders what to do with the remaining algae. And then she ends up bumping into Jinshu, so they go to his office, and he explains that he has a lot of work accumulated, and he can't understand anything about the work because he has a partner who differs from his opinion.
convenience, and Mao Mao confirms that he indeed has a strange partner, but Jinxiu says that his opponent is a very intelligent military official, however he is already 40 years old and has not married, as his only interest is in Baduk, Jangi, and rumors. And while he laments, Mao Mao just asks them to forget about these conflicts, besides, she has no interest in remembering or worrying about these trivial matters. And when leaving the place, Mao Mao feels that she should not ignore Jinji's story, as she has a bad feeling about this situation, and in the meantime Rockin goes to Jinxer's room, and comments that it is difficult to see flowers in winter, so he had to go to that area. And when you think a little more, the sir remembers that when visiting Nok Chongwan in the past, he met someone, to which Jinxer asks what kind of courtesan she was, and Rockin just says that she was a good person. And he comments that Baduk and Jangi have always been their specialties, but when he saw her defeating a soldier, he says he was impressed, as she demonstrated that she had great skills too. And upon realizing that he would not meet her again, Rockin states that things are not happening according to his wishes, and so he needed to increase the price of that courtesan in a competition with another rich man. At this Jinsha remembers that the price to buy a courtesan is often enough to build a palace, and Rockin says that she really is a very special courtesan, as she does not treat him as a simple client, but even when she served him tea gently, Rockin reports that he used to look at her arrogantly. And in order not to lose her, he claims that he resorted to very dirty methods, so if he couldn't pay for her because she was expensive, all Rockin needed to do was lower the price of the girl. And before revealing his dirty method, he says he has a favor to ask Jinsha, so he asks what it would be, and Rockin informs him that he found out about his maid having been to this place recently and solving a strange riddle. And then he informs that among his acquaintances, there is a person who donates goods to the royal court, but this person recently passed away, and he says that the deceased was his disciple, and ended up dying of frustration when he was unable to transmit the secret techniques that I was learning. And for Rockin, this disciple of his must have left a clue behind, so he says he would like to know more about what happened, and he suggests that Jinxer's intelligent maid can help him in this regard. And as for Mao Mao, she was outside, when suddenly it started to rain very heavily. And after that, Mayame goes to Jinsha and comments that he always gives him boring work without permission, and then he explains that the situation is now a delicate matter involving a friend of a friend. In this case, the court's goldsmith supplier died without teaching his techniques to his children and apprentices, and with this Mao Mao deduces that his mission is to discover the secret technique of listening, but upon hearing her speaking like that, Jinsha informs her that this is not the case. It will be an easy task. And then he explains that the deceased left three sons, who were all his apprentices, and one of them will be the new supplier to replace his father's place, and in Hirs will, he had written the way in which his possessions should be distributed. In this case, the first child will receive the attached studio, the second will receive furniture with goldsmith decorations, and finally, the third child will receive an aquarium with goldfish. And the boy's father's last words suggested that the children have tea together just like in the old days, and upon hearing this, Mao Mao starts to pull some strings in her mind, and she states that her father's last words should be taken into account, consideration to solve this new problem. But still, Jin Shur says that his children still don't know much about their father's techniques, and Mao Mao comments that there is an apparent imbalance in how the possessions were divided, as the youngest son took the most banal inheritance. And then she asks what kind of goldfish the boy received, and Jin Shur says he didn't hear any details about it, however he remembers that his friend showed him an address for him to to follow if he wanted to know more about the case. And upon discovering this, Mao Mao notices that the man was already prepared and aware of what would happen, and so she suggests going to visit them the next day, and when the day arrives, she passes through Basin, and like last time, he says that Mao Mao will be his personal servant, so she must move or do anything only when he tells her to. And although she notices that he doesn't like her much, Mao Mao says she is satisfied with the fact that he doesn't do anything to her, and as they continue further, they arrive at the house house of one of Uvire's children, and right at entrance she notices a strange object in a hole in the wall. And upon seeing her looking so closely at it, the son comments that this object belonged to his father, as he had a hobby of collecting strange things, and moving further into the house, they arrive at the studio, a place intended for tea parties, workers, and entering there, they come across the other brothers, and analyzing the place, Mao Mao notices that the furniture placed in the center of the studio makes everything look irritating, however the 
the play still gives a good impression and she deduces that it is due to the fact that the tables are set in a uniform manner. In addition, the decoration of the cabinet also helps to maintain an attractive appearance in the room. And then Mao Mao notices that there are keyholes in the first three rows of the furniture and in the bottom center shelf as well. And in the case of this shelf, it is decorated with a different type of metal. And then she notices that this shelf is fixed to the floor to don't move. Then one of the brothers goes to her and tells the girl to just look at the shelves, after all they are her belongings, and upon hearing this she deduces that the other brother is the oldest, and when looking at the window, Mao Mao realizes that she too is positioned in a suspicious way, because that was made for let in a lot of sunlight, but the huge chestnut tree outside blocks the sun, causing the light that enters the house to be filtered by the tree, so the girl notices that there is a mark on the stage in front of her, as if something had been placed there a long time ago, and while waiting for the riddle to be solved, the older brother asks if Mao Mao would really be able to solve his problem, and then Basin says that they can't be sure unless the son tells them more details. And then the son explains that he has already told everything he knew, and says that the only thing that was left for him was that shed, and in the case of the other brothers, they received a cabinet and a glass bowl. And upon seeing her, Mao Mao notices that that aquarium is made with glass that is more resistant than she imagined, after all, she thought that the goldfish aquarium would be made of wood or porcelain, and in this case, all those goods have their own value. And while the girl thinks about these details, one of the brothers expresses that he doesn't understand their father, after all he only left them these strange objects and a key that doesn't fit any lock on the shelves. And then he explains that all the other shelves open with a specific key, except for the central shelf, because so far he hasn't been able to find the key that opens it either. And with that he states that it doesn't make any sense to receive a gift that he can't even open, and then the other brother says that this applies to him too, after all he received a shed, but he can't move the cabinet that is in his house. Path. And finally, the youngest son makes a deduction as to what their father's will would be, but before he can say it, the other brothers interrupt him, and one of them states that there is no sense in their father wanting to unite them in a tea. And when faced with that enigmatic situation, Mao Mao doesn't know what to do, as the relationship between his brothers is no longer the best, and then their mother appears there, and tells the three brothers to stop fighting in front of their parents. Guests. She apologizes to Basin and Mao Mao, and explains that for some reason, the two older children have become cynical and bitter, while the youngest still doesn't have the autonomy to speak for himself. And then the lady asks the guests to have tea with them too, and when analyzing the three brothers further, Mao Mao notices that they all changed their position to sit, and she deduces that this is because they already have seats assigned to each other, each one. And analyzing the sunlight that entered the room, she realized that if the light extended and entered the studio even further, it could reach the cabinet, and because of this, the cabinet did not suffer damage caused by the sun. And with that in mind, Mao Mao gets up and notices that the sun hasn't reached that stage in front of the window for a long time, and when she looks at the lock on the central shelf again, she realizes that there's something inside there. And when he sees her paying so much attention to that shelf all of a sudden, Basin asks if she discovered something, and then she recaps the situation, and says that the middle shelf doesn't open with her son's key. The son explains that a few years ago the key used to open the shelf, but as you listened he added decorations to the furniture, which meant that the key no longer worked. And he explains that if the lock is broken by force, everything inside the shelf will also break, so he cannot try to open it like that. Having said that, Mao Mao remembers again the objects that were passed on to the three brothers, in this case it would be the shed, the cabinet, and the goldfish aquarium. And analyzing all the problems with these items, we have a cabinet locked in the position for the shed, which means that they cannot access it, other than that, we have the lock that does not open the cabinet, and finally, she remembers the Uvire's last words, where he asks his three children to have tea together. And when connecting the dots, she looks at the aquarium and deduces that it could be a decoration on the shelf, and when placing the item in front of the sun, the boy explains that they never left the aquarium there, because if it got cold, it could die. And since then, they have never had any more goldfish, and the aquarium only served as part of the furniture's decoration. Having said that, Mao Mao goes to get some water, and when he pours it into the aquarium, his son moves it in a way that leaves the fish drawing against the 
sun's rays. And as he does so, a uniform ray goes towards the lock, and after it disperses, Mao Mao asks the middle son to use his key again to try to open the shelf, and even though he is skeptical that anything will work, the son obeys to her, and then the key finally opens the shelf. Then Mao Mao asks if their father used to have anemia and stomach pains, and the boy says yes, and besides that he also had nausea and depression, and then Mao Mao makes it clear that he doesn't know much about goldsmithing, and to help her, she asks if her youngest son also uses welding in the studio, and he says yes. And when faced with all this information, Basin asks what this means, and she explains that she just followed their father's wishes, in this case, she made them have tea together, just like they did in the past. And when taking the item from the shelf, she notices that it is a mold for making keys, and the key placed on the box was still hot, therefore, Mao Mao deduces that the heat from the sun must have melted the metal trapped inside the box, keyhole, and with that the key was made instantly, and when using this new key on another shelf, she manages to open it too, and inside Mao Mao finds another one of those crystals that she had already seen at the entrance to the house, and then the youngest son takes that material and starts to observe it, and Mao Mao remembers a phrase that said that skills should be acquired through observation, and she explains that she heard that phrase several times from a craftsman client, and when she sees the boy observing the object, she notices that only he understood his late father's message, unlike the other brothers who are just complaining about the whole situation. And then she looks at the situation again, and says that solder melts at a lower temperature than its parent metals when mixed with various types of metal. And she notices that of the three pieces of metal, there are two of lead and brown, so she understands that if they add a third variation of metal, they can create something entirely new. And when analyzing the size proportions of the shelves, she deduces that this could indicate the mixing ratio of these metals, and while she tries to solve the riddle, the older brothers leave the place disappointed with their father. But before they left, the youngest son explains to his brothers that their father's will was to make them vote to stay close, and that's why he left this message. And taking his theory into consideration, the boy asks to go back to work with them both, but they say they can't accept that, after all, their youngest son is much more talented than them, and they both claim that it was for this reason that their father trusted the boy much more. However, he tells his brothers that Aviars also trusted them both, after all their father always praised his brothers to him. In the case of brother Chan he was described by Aviars as a calm and very precise boy with detailed work. As for brother Tsu, he is described as a good capturer of people's hearts, and the boy states that being able to become friends with anyone is a skill that Tsu should be proud of. Having said all this, Mao Mao and Basin decide to return to the palace, but first she informs the youngest son about his father being a very good doctor, and she suggests that the boy make consultations with him if he becomes ill. And meanwhile, Jin Chur's friend thanks him for his help in solving the problem of the three brothers, and he informs that the most capable of all was the youngest brother, and after solving the case, he would have become even more skilled. And you deduce that this boy Zay will become the successor and create a metallurgical factory for the court, while the other older brothers will both no longer work as artisans after this incident. The oldest will manage sales, while the middle brother will be responsible for selling the products, so they will continue to support the company, but in different ways. And going back to talking about the boy's father, the man comments that he made a simple metal accessory, however this item was used as decoration for ritual goods, and upon hearing this, Jinshur notes that ritual goods are completely outside his competence. And the Lord General explains that he would think it a huge waste to neglect a hidden talent like that, and although Jinshur thinks the General is a despicable guy, he recognizes that the Lord is good at finding talent in people. And with that he shows interest in hearing more about the story of the courtesan that Lachan had previously commented on, in which you remember saying that you can reduce the scarcity value of a courtesan. However, Lachan suggests that he ask this to a person who understands this world more than he does. With that said he says goodbye, and then Jinshur calls Mao Mao to help him scheme, and upon hearing this, she is left without understanding anything. After being asked if she has skills as a makeup artist, Jinshi sends for Mao Mao and when she arrives he asks if she understands makeup well and when the girl says yes he asks her to do his makeup with a makeup artist Jinshi asks Mao Mao to do his makeup and this leaves the girl completely in shock but she thinks to herself that this is useless and begin to remember that in the history of the world many nations fell because of women and became someone as beautiful as a celestial maiden if she put on makeup this could end badly and so she asks 
asks if he wants to end a nation but he doesn't even understand the girl's sarcasm so he returns to the subject asking how she creates her face powder and in that she understands that this time he wants to become ugly so she says that she adds some clay and mixes it with oil to make the foundation that she puts on his face. And he immediately becomes interested asking if she could do more of that in a short time and she says that would just need of one night and then she starts to spread it on his skin. Noticing that for Jean Sher's skin tone it would be a little too dark and so he thinks that it would be good if there was a medicine that would change his face and Mao Mao says that if he wants to look with a commoner she can probably do that for him and in this he accepts her help and asks for complete training and already in her room she is thinking about what plan he would have but how did she accept this service she says she will go with everything but when she arrives in the morning she sees Jean Sher receiving the best of treatments for his hair something that goes completely against today's work proposal and she even confirms with him if he still plans to go ahead with the plan and when he confirms she smells his skin and says that he obviously smells like very expensive incense and she states that a commoner would never come close to one of these and she also talks about his clothes which are the normal clothes of low-ranking officers that being said she begins to describe the smell of all the products used in the perfume that Jean Sher is in using and upon hearing this he notes that she in fact knows him well so Mao Mao states that to distinguish medicinal herbs from poisonous plants she has developed a much better sense of smell than other common people she asks if Jean Sher would know how to differentiate the level of his guests by smell and Mao Mao explains that a bad smell indicates a guest with a higher probability of causing headaches a person with a sour smell who doesn't usually take a shower and has unhygienic habits and she comments that people who have recently arrived at the Casa Verdetna most of the time they are expelled as soon as they enter Jean remembers the advice of his friend who told him to ask specific questions to people who know the world of courtesans so Mao Mao asks Gao Chun to bring other clothes for us and preferably filthy clothes and to make matters even worse. She takes a sticky substance and says that she will apply it to his hair to remove the shine and worsen its texture and in doing so she ties his hair to fix the product in it Gao Chun appears with the thinnest clothes mot and stinky ones she found but she still thinks they could be worse in that she asks us to take off his clothes and when she sees him without a shirt she notices that he actually looks like a celestial maiden however he still has well-defined and proportionate muscles in that she finds a way to make him look much worse physically with that choppy belly. Then she realizes that he looks very different when he's not well taken care of but she says that she still needs to make his face look ugly and he informs her that he created some facial powders with dark colors and will use it to give a more burned appearance to his skin everything so that he looks even more like the commoner while using his skin she decides to test some feminine makeup on him to see how it will look. Then she puts lipstick on the guy and when he opens he doesn't understand anything and asks what's going on but Mao Mao simply takes off his lipstick quickly thanking the heavens that only the three of them saw that and after that she decides to go back to the procedure she was thinking about doing from the beginning. And when Mao Mao takes his hand she notices that even though Jean Sher is very important he has blisters on his hand so she did deduces that these injuries occur because he holds swords for a long time in fights and to make him even worse. Mao Mao serves him a drink with horrible smell and asks him to drink from it Mao Mao explains that it is a stimulant although it is spicy it is not poisonous and to drink the drink she gives him some cotton balls and tells us to put them on his cheek so that he can change the shape of his face and after that he is finally ready but Mao Mao still notices that he is still very handsome but she says that she did her best to make him as bad as possible. Then she comments to Gao Chun that soon she will be able to visit her family again. So Gao Chun informs that Jin Sher will go with her because if he is in disguise it would be strange for him to be accompanied by his usual servants and upon hearing this idea we immediately agree. Mao Mao explains that if she accompanied him it would be suspicious. After all, everyone knows her as a maid. Maid of people. However Gao Chun states that this is not true but the lady next door suggests that Mao Mao disguise herself too if that is the problem and she states that if the girl changed her usual appearance a little she would no longer be recognized and done. They continue their journey together and Jean Sher asks the girl not to call him by his name during this period because otherwise he would be discovered, so he asks her to call him Jinka. After all, that is the name that goes well with the way they are dressed. In this Mao Mao remembers that the, the clothes she is wearing are those of Suiren's daughter and based on her clothes she believes that she could be mistaken for a rich girl. Moving forward, she knows 
notes that adding the name Hana to the Jinka was a somewhat unusual choice and, taking this into consideration, she believes it would have been better to have dressed him as a woman, but she believes that doing so would end the peace of the world. So it's better to leave that idea aside while Bazin stays from afar. So he wonders why he should be their guard and says that it also doesn't make sense to watch them from afar while they two go to a cafeteria Mao Mao teaches Jinka to behave more like a servant and tells him to always walk behind her and when passing through a fair Mao Mao has the idea of asking them to make a chicken stew but Jinka makes him give up on the idea and with that the two keep going on. Ahead and Mao Mao comments that he was thinking of taking some vegetables to the old man and she claims that her father is by far the most talented mortgage doctor in the area but for some reason he has no idea how to calculate his profits and losses and because of this, even though his profession is very lucrative, he lives in a dilapidated hut and she believes that if he ends up going bankrupt, grandma will at least put food in his mouth. But in the middle of all this thinking, Jean Sher goes to her angry and asks or why she is so. Silent and Mao Mao explains that he simply has nothing important to say about this, she smells chicken skewers and decides to buy them, so he hands Jinchur a skewer and when he sees that he is not eating, she reassures him that the skewer is not poisoned after all. She he's eating right in front of him but he says it's not because of that but because of the cotton balls that were in his mouth and after removing the cotton balls he goes there and eats the skewer and he says that the skewer is better than the one at the camp and hearing this is a strange Mao Mao well, no. She knew that eunuchs also did work that soldiers do but she notices that he is enjoying a speedo and that is the most important thing and as for Gao Chun he goes back to the swear and lady so she asks him how his escort mission was and Gao Chun comments that her master was in a great mood about this she says that he had a great idea in making Jin Shi accompany Mao Mao after all after he found this girl he liked so much he would only feel satisfied if he was with her so swear and compares Mao Mao with the toy his favorite and states that if they hid it from Jin Shir he would get upset a lot, consequently no one would be able to deal with him. So she reminds Gao Chun that he tried to calm him down many times by bringing toys to Jin Shir but nothing worked and when he returned to the two he tells Mao Mao that she doesn't need to be in such a hurry but she explains that he needs to get to his destination quickly after all he is going to meet someone but Jin Shir believes that she is actually wanting to get rid of him as quickly as possible in her mind Mao Mao. She says that she is actually thinking thinking of going back to the market soon and buying those radishes and chicken after leaving it there, Jin Shi tells her that Mao Mao's life at court is much better than life in the Prazer district, and she says that that actually living at court isn't that bad, but she says she's worried about her adoptive father and the way he's living and when I hear her say this, people are surprised to discover that Mao Mao cares about something other than medicine and poison, so she explains that her father is her mentor in medicine therefore she needs to ensure that he lives a long life and she informs him that in addition to being an excellent connoisseur of Chinese medicine he is also very skilled in western medicinal practices as he used to study abroad so people notice that her father is in fact very skilled after all. He could only study abroad if he was selected by the country itself that being said. He asks why such a talented person is working as a pharmacist in the Prazer neighborhood. Mao Mao says that even he having received two talents he was not so lucky either as his single most important part of his body body was taken away and hearing this people deduce that her father is a eunuch so Mao Mao explains that because he studied abroad in the west he ended up being transformed into a eunuch at the hand of the previous emperor and leaving this matter aside she notices a hotel with some people in front of it Papaya understands why Jin Shi came in disguise so he asks a little more about the people who frequent the house. Verdict however Mao Mo leaves of course he can't talk about this subject after all they are talking about a brothel that said Jin Shi remembers what was said previously by Lacken about asking someone he knows how to lower the price of a courtesan so he decides to ask this question to Xi but Mao Mao states that this is a very unpleasant question but she is still willing to answer this question and explains that there are two ways to achieve this so she comments that most courtesans are trained when they are apprentices and at that time they are separated by beautiful and simple girls so they are separated by functions from entertaining clients to serving teas and looking for potential clients and as the courtesans gain experience they become more and more guys and Mao Mao says that some of these girls remain untouched by customers until they are purchased and in these cases these girls are the most valuable and if she is a courtesan who has already been touched her value drops by half. And finally if the girl getting pregnant is where it is practically useless and worthless. That said, Mao Mao 
Mao comments that Jean Cher's meeting place is at the restaurant next door and so she decides to leave him alone but he pulls her by the arm and Mao Mao explains that she won't be able to enter the restaurant with him after all they are both disguised. With that said she leaves and wants him to enjoy his night and upon arriving home Mao Mao has a nightmare where a baby is stabbed and then she deduces that that dream was a memory from when she was baby and upon seeing her awake her father asks if the girl has plans for that day but Mao Mao says he won't do anything and then he asks her to go to the Verdigris house for him and when she gets there one of the employees wonder if she shouldn't be at work but she says she's on her day off then Perrin and the old woman argue about something but when she sees Mao Mao their Perrin goes over to hug her then the old woman follows her saying that the two still need to talk a little more and then they go back to arguing and Mao Mao just sits in the corner listening to everything so she decides to leave the place quietly so that the two don't notice her escaping from that mess and at that moment the old note that Mao Mao was there the whole time and meanwhile she goes to another woman's room and comments that if she went before she would be expelled when she entered there but the girl in question no longer has the strength to fight and decides to just remain silent however Mao Mao deduces that perhaps she just can't speak anymore after all the illness that affects the girl is getting worse and worse causing her entire memory to be shattered to do so she makes her take her father's medicine and although his medicine is very effective Mao Mao believes that in this woman's case her illness is already very serious so the medicine will no longer be as efficient and meanwhile the employee returns to the old woman and informs her that the same customer is at the Verdit house once again and upon hearing this she asks to inform Mao Mao and as for her the girl comments that Casa Verdit is a very prestigious brothel nowadays however just over 10 years ago the name of this brothel was completely contaminated and in this time of decline the woman in front of him worked as a courtesan in the brothel until she ended up contracting syphilis and when Mao Mao's father visited the Verdigris house her illness had already worsened to the point that she needed to be incubated however this only happened because her father couldn't inform her about the illness in time but the girl certainly wouldn't believe his word after all he's just a random eunuch so he doesn't have much credibility furthermore they need to always hire clients so that they can survive and by continuing with her work the woman ended up accelerating the progress of her tumor and as a result she forced herself to live in the outhouse after all she could no longer be achieved by customers and so she became a useless courtesan with that said Mao Mao decides to burn incense in the room to help with the smell of the place and while making preparations she hears the woman singing softly and then a girl goes to the room and informs that a strange man with glasses returned to the brothel so Mao Mao could no longer stay there from this she deduces that if she stays in that room she will be out of sight of this client and after that Perrin goes to her to inform her that the man has already left and when talking about the subject Perrin comments that the old woman has no problem letting him frequent the brothel as long as he pours all his money into her business to which Mao Mao explains that the lady just wants to see her become a courtesan just to have another source of income and then Perrin states that this proposal is very tempting for many girls and when they arrive in the shower Perrin explains that she is already at an age to think about her future, to which Mao Mao comments that she is only 30 years old, but still Perrin is already at the age to retire from the life of a courtesan. And then Mao Mao suggests that she work independently, but Perrin says that she still wants to work in that place for a little longer. In this Mao Mao says that he is not able to understand her, but deduces that she could be there out of love, but this is a feeling that she herself claims she no longer has, as she still left them in the body of the woman who gave birth to her. And while the girl reflects on these things, the other princesses appear to take a bath with the two, and then Perrin sets out to rinse Mao Mao's back, and in the meantime, he returns to the palace after the meeting at the restaurant. So he goes straight to Mao Mao, and asks to talk to her, and then he presents her with a drink, for which she thanks him and decides to go back to work straight away, Jean Sher then watches her working from afar. And after that, Swearan informs Mao Mao that they will have a Buddhist meal that day, so the lady tells her not to eat meat or fish, and when he notices her traveling, Swearan catches the girl's attention, and Mao Mao notices that he is thinking too much about the woman. Of the external bathroom. And in addition to giving her an earful, Swearan informs her that she is not allowed to hide strange herbs in the closet, instead, she must ask Jinsher to find a room to leave these herbs. 
However, Mao Mao explains that he cannot use an aristocrat's room in that way, and Swearan notes that the girl is in fact very careful with her limits, and Mao Mao comments that she was born into a very low status, therefore, being in a palace like that, is still something surprising to her. But upon hearing this, Swearan states that people with high status are not that different from her, and for the lady, dividing people by status is very wasteful, as no one knows what life will provide for each person. That said, she decides to go back to work, and asks Mao Mao to help her by going to get a specific medicine, and when she arrives at the place, she is impressed, after all, there was a warehouse of medicines very different from the one administered by the quack doctor. And when observing that huge amount of cabinets, Mao Mao wonders what is there, and she ends up getting too excited, and then Suere goes to her, and asks what the girl is doing, and Mao Mao explains that she is just waiting for her medicine. Then a man goes to Suere, and as they talk, Mao Mao remembers that he had met that woman previously at the military base, and she deduces that Suere had smelled the medicinal herbs because he worked in the army. And upon noticing her look of contempt, Ma Wan wonders why Suere hates her so much and when the woman leaves the room, the other employee regrets seeing her working like a court lady even though Suere is of high class. And when he noticed that he was delaying Mao Mao's order for a long time, he runs to get her medicine and upon returning to Suere, she wonders what that medicine would be so she decides to try it and feels a strong taste of potato in her mouth. Dust. And then Mao Mao remembers that that medicine is for Jin Shi and speaking of him, she notices that there are many mysteries surrounding him and in addition, she is also surprised by the work he receives regularly, about once a month. And Mao Mao reports that Jin Shi takes a long bath the day before work, then he burns incense and leaves the bathroom, and then she notices that this same thing happens with Buddhist meals, as it serves as a purification ceremony. In this she wonders whether eunuchs can also perform rituals, and in addition, she also wonders whether Jin Shi would have been forced to become a eunuch by the wife of the former emperor after all his father had this punishment. And meanwhile, Jin He comments to Gao Shun that Mao Mao's adoptive father is actually a former eunuch doctor and Gao Shun states that all of her experiences make sense now as she received lessons from a doctor. However, he says he cannot think of a doctor so skilled as to be a eunuch in the past and in the middle of the conversation, Jin Shi's inconvenient friend appears and says that they should continue the conversation they were having the other day. In this Lakan explains that it took him 10 years to convince the old woman to comply with what he wanted, so seeing that someone snatched her away leaves him in complete shock and Jin Shi understands that he would be there willing to negotiate to receive his pleasure back. However, Jin Shi asks what he would do if he didn't accept agreements and then Lakan explains that he wouldn't be able to do anything, after all, few people have the power to order Jin Shi and upon hearing this, he discovers that that man knows about his true identity. identity. And then Lakan states that Jin Shi's opinions very according to what Mao Mao thinks, and upon seeing that it is in his hands, Jin Shi comments that this man in front of him is Mao Mao's biological father. Then he leaves the room and says that he will meet his daughter soon, and after that, he goes to Mao Mao and informs that there is an employee who wants to meet with her, and when asking who that would be, Jin He says that it's Lakan. But upon noticing her discomfort, he is willing to tell the man that she doesn't want to meet him, so she thanks him and leaves him behind, and then Jin Shi notes that this is the first time he has seen Mao Mao like this. And meanwhile, the girl goes to a field of medicinal herbs to distract herself and then Sui Rei goes to her and realizes that Mao Mao was planning to take those herbs. And when she is discovered, she has no reaction but the young woman informs her that Mao Mao doesn't need to worry as that field doesn't belong to anyone. However the doctors also know and go to that place. So Sui Rei suggests that she not go there. And then Mao Mao asks if that young woman was assigned to take care of it and she replies that she only grows her herbs in that place, and Mao Mao notices her selecting only the weeds, and then she remembers that the girl's name was Suere. Furthermore, she analyzes the young woman a little more, and notices that she does not appear to be such an energetic person, so she questions what Suere usually cultivates in that land, and she explains that she is cultivating resurrection medicine. And upon hearing this, Mao Mao is surprised, and asks if the young woman is talking about a medicine that can bring the dead to life, after all, if something like that is 
real, Mao Mao states that he will do everything to have this medicine. However, Sui Rei says that she is just joking, and then she asks Mao Mao how skilled she is as an apothecary, and she says that she wouldn't know how to calculate that. And then Sui Rei explains that she will soon plant some morning glories there. With that said she says goodbye and leaves. And meanwhile, Gao Shan comments about that day's plans with his master, and informs Jin Shir that they will have the mid-festival in the afternoon. But while he speaks, Jin Shir is traveling, and thinks again of that moment when Mao Mao looked at him with a scary face and ran after. And seeing him so distracted while they talk, Gao Shan says that he knows more or less what he is thinking about. After all he already knows his master very well. However Gao Shan asks Jin Shir to be careful with these thoughts, as this will end up his productivity at work. And then Jin Shir makes it clear that he knows this. And while the two continue their conversation, Lihaku goes to Mao Mao, desperate about something, and explains that a very bad thing has just happened, and to contextualize the story, he talks to her about the incident that caused the fire in the warehouse, and he says that that same day he hears a robbery in a different warehouse. And thinking a little about these connections between one thing and another, Lehaka deduces that the bandits took advantage of the commotion that the fire caused to steal. Mao Mao asks what exactly they stole, but before answering, he asks the two to talk in a more isolated location. And then he reveals that they lost some ritual items, and upon hearing this, Mao Mao asks about the security of the warehouse, and Lehaku explains that they still don't have any experienced managers there at the moment. And as for the old manager, Lehaku informs that he died last year. As for the current manager, he had food poisoning a while ago, so he is also not able to return to work, having said that Lehaku states that they are in trouble. And then Mao Mao notices that this story is similar to something she has already heard, so she asks if this manager would be the same as a bureaucrat who is a fan of delicious food, and Lehaku confirms that he is. And taking into consideration all the facts presented so far, Mao Mao feels that it is too much of a coincidence that everything happened by chance, and so she asks more about who the manager who passed away last year was. And Lehaku says that he was famous for being very straight-laced, and besides that he also loved sweets, so Mao Mao suggests that he is talking about Conan, in this case, the greedy employee who died after eating an excessive amount of salt. And then she begins to suspect that all this is not a coincidence, as all these accidents can easily be orchestrated by someone with some kind of hidden purpose. And as for that item that Mao Mao gave him, Lehaku says that he was unable to return the object to the owner, as he had said he didn't want it anymore, and Mao Mao says that he didn't expect the owner to discard the item, after all it appears to be something very precious. And then Lehaku explains that that pipe was given to a warehouse guard by the court lady, as this guard escorted him to the palace, and as a reward for his work, he received that expensive and high-quality item. And upon hearing this, Mao Mao notices that something is wrong, as the item is apparently too good to be refused, so she deduces that the lady of the court handed this pipe to the warehouse guard with the intention of causing the fire. And to clear up her doubts, she asks him who this court lady is, but Lehaku claims that she was wearing a scarf over her face, so the guard was unable to recognize her. At this Mao Mao comments that perhaps she was hiding her face on purpose, and Lehaku also informs that this woman was very tall and smelled of medicine. And upon hearing this, Mao Mao asks him to RTO elaborate on any more strange incidents that she has noticed, but Lehaku questions her if investigating this will really reveal anything, and she says that maybe it will, but they may not discover anything. And then Mao Mao explains that two coincidences can indeed occur at the same time, however, if the coincidences exceed an exception acceptable limit, and the lady of the court is in the middle of it all, this stops becoming just a subsection of coincidences. And upon hearing this, Lehaku gets excited, and claims that she is smarter than she looks, but he ends up getting excited and touches her, and Jinshu sees the whole singing scene, and gets a scary glow as he looks at them. And then Lehaku leaves the place, and then Mao Mao is taken to Jinshu's room, and there she explains that she was just talking to the officer about some issues that were bothering him. So she wonders if Jinshu has anything to do with those coincidences, and he says that in fact these connections are very strange, but Mao Mao says he doesn't know exactly what they mean, because the person who made them was setting several traps in the hope for everything to be interpreted as a big accident. However, Mao Mao makes it clear that with all the incidents, it is still difficult to say whether everything was planned or not, as so far there is still the possibility that everything is just a coincidence. And then Jinshu reveals that one day while talking to a merchant, he learned about an interesting irem that is circulating around, and upon reading the name of the product, Mao Mao notices 
that it is a high quality medicine made with cows. Then she starts to get excited and begs for this medicine. But Jinshu states that he will only give it to her if the girl does well in a specific mission. So he asks Gao Shan to get straight to the point. And then she is informed about the incident from the other day involving the employee of the rights council who had food poisoning, in which she remembers that this council is responsible for managing the education and external relations of the place. And while she studies the case, another servant comes to her to give her more materials, and then she asks something about what is in the documents, and the master informs her that it has to do with festivity. Then Mao Mao asks him to get her something to write urgently, and she notices that both the food poisoned officer and Mr. Conan work with festivities. And then she deduces that the smoke pipe incident was actually a way to ensure that the ritual items were stolen. And if this is true, Mao Mao states that there must be a meeting point between all these coincidences. From this, she deduces that the ritual items are intended to be used in large festivities even greater than the mid-festival, and when thinking more about this subject, she remembers that Jinshu performs purification ceremonies with a certain frequency. Then the servant goes to her and gives her some more materials related to the festival, and upon opening the parchment, Mao Mao has access to a sketch of the place where the ritual took place. And the servant informs that the place is known as the Altar of the Sapphire Sky, however the design of the environment appears to be somewhat strange. And then he informs that there is a large beam hanging from the roof, in addition to a long curtain hanging over the central ritual altar, in which Mao Mao notes that he is very experienced in these matters. And the servant explains that before starting his work in the archives, he had a more suitable position in the Ministry of Rights, but on a certain day he said something that displeased his superiors, and that's why he was put to work in the archives. And then he explains that at first he was worried with the strength of the ritual pole as they always placed it in a bad way and that's why he was afraid that the pole would eventually fall but when he asked about it he ended up being fired from the place by a superior. And then Mao Mao notices that the way the pole was placed is really scary as it could fall and kill someone below so she returns to the focus of her research and wonders which item exactly was stolen and in in the midst of her reflections she remembers that if a ritual item is stolen they must make another. She remembers that this same sentence was said on the day she solved the riddle left by the father of the three brothers, and then Mao Mao asks the servant when the next ceremony will be held in that room, and he says it will be on that day. She hurries up and says that this ceremony had certainly been planned for days, and although some traps were not well applied, several others managed to overlap, causing the direction of everything to be led up to that moment. And even though she is just speculating things, Mao Mao goes to the altar of the sapphire sky, but one of the guards stops her from entering and asks what the girl is doing, so Mao Mao just asks to enter, but the guard explains that he cannot allow that. What's more, she's just a maid, so she has no power to go against the palace's rules. And when she finds herself in this delicate situation, she says that there is a person at risk, and that is why they should cancel the festivities, but the guard says that she should use the suggestion box if she wants to say something about the event. And then Mao Mao insists, and says that there is a serious flaw in the ritual altar, so so if he doesn't let her intervene in time, they will regret it later. So she decides to provoke him, saying that the guard must also be behind this setup, at the altar. And upon hearing such an insult, the guard throws her away with his club, but she gets up straight away, as there is something very important to resolve. And then she says, it's over Jessica, and asks again to pass. But this time she uses their fear to her advantage, and says that if a noble is injured in this event, the organizers of the ritual will be beheaded. And then she explains that he can lie by saying that she entered the place without him knowing. However, the guard continues to disbelieve her word until Jean Cher's old friend enters the conversation and is willing to take responsibility for letting her into the event. At this point, Mao Mao wonders who is after her, but then decides to leave that matter aside and just runs towards the altar, and on the way she notices that she must look horrible after being attacked by the guard, but she decides just take a shower later and everything will be fine again. And when she finally reaches the center of the altar, she notices in time the pole breaking loose and falling towards a nobleman, Mao Mao jumps towards the guy and saves him, and when looking at the person in question, she discovers that if it was about Jin Shi, and then she takes the opportunity to ask for the medicine he was supposed to give her, but Jin Shi says that it's time for them to talk about it, after all, her face is completely deformed, so Mao Mao wonders why he is in that place, but soon after, she starts to feel sick in his lap, and asks to be able to sew up the tear in her leg, so Jin 
Shu asks her to stay awake, but Mao Mao ends up passing out. And then he picks her up and carries her off the altar. And after that scene painful from the last episode Mao Mao wakes up in a room and smells sandalwood incense. Then she realizes that she is in the Jinch room and if she moves a little her head starts to hurt so the housekeeper goes to her and explains that Jin took her there because it is much better than the infirmary and so she gives her some tea so that she relaxes then after drinking tea she asks Mao Mao to get dressed because she will call everyone there and he understands immediately and already at the meeting Bazin is completely furious but Mao Mao says she understands him after all his masters. Life was in danger but she says that doesn't deserve to receive these screams and so she bails. Jin Chen he gets straight to the point asking how she got there and also how she knew that the pillar would fall and he asks her to explain and then she starts saying that it was a sequence of coincidences because these coincidences apparently would have been caused all to happen meet at that moment and she says that looking at it from that side it was a conspiracy. The first coincidence was the death of Master Ken. All because he was a high ranking official from the Ministry of Rights last year and she says that the second coincidence was a fire in the warehouse and also the theft of certain items from the rights and the third coincidence was the manager of ceremonial tools falling ill from food poisoning right around the same time of year. She confirms that she thinks that all these coincidences were caused by one person and Mao Mao says that in addition, the theft of tools is something very strange. After all, during the ceremony, the pillar is pulled up by metal wires and is tied to the ground and its objective was to look like an accident. I need to look. All metal pieces but Bazin says that if they were stolen someone would probably have others made and Mao Mao explained that because they were used in a ritual they were probably very ornate so she can think of a craftsman who could have made this so we also think of that sculptor who died and Mao Mao assumes that the metal pieces were probably made to break as soon as they are heated but Bazin shouts again saying that it is metal and what kind of metal would break like that so Mao Mao remembers about that secret metal that the artisan's father taught them and she reaffirms that if the secret metal was used it would most likely break just by heating a candle so Jinch thinks that maybe he was involved in this conspiracy but Mao Mao says that he probably just went ordered to build the pieces that way because someone must have come to him and asked for the secret metal so he could do that but if the craftsman came to know that an accident had happened using the metal he would find him suspicious but if he were eliminated both the person who asked for the metal and the craftsman would be out of the picture so people ask if the craftsman would have been murdered but Mao Mao says he doesn't know however the chance of them making it look like an accident and all she can say is that whoever made the proposal probably knew the secret of this metal so she finishes her deduction and at this she begins to think to herself that who would have thought that Jinch would be at that ceremony this man because if he is someone worth trying to kill with the so complicated plan but she makes deductions and says that knowing too much would only give her a headache so she concludes that all this has nothing to do with her anymore and then in the other day Mao Mao is apparently already there when a visitor arrives for her so Bazin goes to talk to the girl and he says he tells about that accident the other day a court lady called Swearin seems to have something to do with it so he says they found the body her and Mao Mao are scared by this fact then he says that one of the ministers went to her room and found that she was dead and he says that the cause of death was poisoning and when they arrived she was already lifeless so he says that they will cremate her body tomorrow inside a coffin so Mao Mao asks if there would be someone else related but he says it's just Sweary so she wonders if Sweary would really have done all this alone and she wonders if she would actually be someone who would kill herself after that and she wonders if really that apathetic face that without emotions would be because of what she was about to do but Mao Mao realizes that the way she spoke to her was as if she was testing her and so Mao Mao remembers about the plant she told him about so she connects everything to resurrection medicine and noticing that she can no longer just leave it in her position. She runs to Jin to confirm things and as soon as she gets there she asks to find out Sweary's body in the morgue because she can't leave things like that but the people notice that the girl is smiling then she realizes that she ended up losing to curiosity and so they go there and the coroner arrives to talk to them and Mao Mao notices that he is the same one who was cute with Swearin the other day so Mao Mao notices that he is very ill but she needs to know why and she asks if the poison that Swearin ingested had a purple skirt and she says that several of these plants grew near the hill there in the stable and she says that this plant would probably not be missing from the pharmacy after all she can to be transformed into a cheap energy drink and she also says that the purple skirt is similar to the white viola string so the doctor starts to 
say considering the symptoms this is quite possible but there is no way to confirm it so Mao Mao gets up and tells him that if there isn't how to confirm they confirmed with their own eyes so she chipped a hole in the coffin that was there and opened it noticing that that body is not Sweary's then the doctor falls to the floor astonished by it and Mao Mao asks if he really checked if it was his will and he he says he would never confuse her with someone else and he says she had no pulse but she was beautiful and clean as she always was and Mao Mao says that in short he was used by her and Mao Mao asks if he didn't even think about cutting up her body to find out what poison that was used and Mao Mao says that she really hoped he wouldn't do that but the doctor starts to get angry so Gao Chun walks in front of him and Mao Mao says that it probably wasn't a purple skirt that she wore and if they investigate in the palace pharmacy they will probably find it what she used and Mao Mao says that the only fault this guy has is that he didn't manage his drugs properly so we ask what it means for this body to be different and Mao Mao says that even though it's a scam having an empty coffin on fire wouldn't go well so she just put another one in body but then he asks him how Suaren's body looks and says that carrying it around would probably bring you a lot of attention but Mao Mao says that no one needed to carry the body after all she just got up and walked away and she says that there is a certain drug that can kill a person and bring her to life and she asks if the doctor already knew that and he says yes but he thought it was just fantasy and she says that in a distant land there is a drug that can kill a person and bring them back to life soon after and she she says that in the composition of this drug the purple skirt and the bayaku are used and in this she asks Gao Chun to analyze the empty coffins and then when she looks at him she finds a coffin that has nail marks and then she deduces that this is the coffin where Swearan came from and she says that when her savior arrived and opened her coffin she came back to life and in its place they placed a coffin with another body and so she came out dressed as one of the collaborators who went to help with this jinch asks if they used such a risky method but Mao Mao says that if she was caught she would go ends up being executed and even says that in her place she would also make this bet and since Suaren's body is not there she won the bet she made and if the replacement body had been cremated it would have been a victory it is complete but Mao Mao says no we'll let her do that and Mao Mao reveals that if she is alive he would love to meet her not to incriminate him but to know the intellect of the person who made several accidents culminate in the outcome of his plan and above all the courage to bet his life to deceive them and Mao Mao thinking to herself says that a person like that dying so soon wouldn't be interesting at all while laughing psychopathically then she says that the medicine of bringing people back to life will teach her whatever it takes then she starts laughing like a villain generic drawing in this she simply stops and asks Jean if he can renar them to do the stitch on her leg again and meanwhile Luan receives a warning from one of her servants in her room Jinch starts to think about the sweary case that was kept in secret and he doesn't know many things about her according to the doctor her teacher was her guardian and the only thing that is known is that he discovered the girl's talent very early and adopted her then Gao Chun finally comes to the room saying that accompanied Mao Mao because of her leg but Jean says that it's not her leg that she's worried about after all there's still that weirdo Lacken who apparently is Mao Mao's father but considering the reaction she had to seeing his name there probably is more things behind that then Gao Chun tastes the liquid he brought for him and he says it will be horrible but Jinch drinks it anyway but he makes a face like it's horrible and Gao Chun says he shouldn't drink it if he doesn't want to but he still says that it is your obligation because you are a eunuch and Gao Chun says that he shouldn't pinch his nose like that because he looks even younger and people say that they know a lot about that his refined mannerism heavenly smiles and honey voice and he says that the 24 year old man who became a eunuch with the arrival five years ago the current emperor since that day he decided to wear this mask so he has been taking this medicine to lose his masculinity every day and Gao Chun says that if he continues taking this he will end up becoming truly impotent but Jean says that two goes for he but Gao Chun that his children are already adults he even gained another grandson these days and Bazin says that his youngest son is is also ready to find a bride so Ji recognizes that the youngest son is Bazin who is 19 years old and Gao Chun says that he is 19 years old just like Jinch but he says that Jinch the eunuch is 24 years old and he says that by the look on Gaixun's face he wants the boy to get a bride soon and he says that he wants to spend time with his grandson again so the next day we will visit Lulan and he starts saying that the emperor seems to be in no hurry for her after all the concubine is always changing her hair and clothes and he has difficulty recognizing her every time they meet but he still continues to visit her every 10 days so he remembers once again about
about the story of Adwa who was neglected by the doctor and ended up losing her son so he asks himself what would happen if this child was still alive but he leaves this matter aside and says that the emperor she needs to have a baby soon but when she sees Gokuyo he ends up noticing that she is exhausted and then she tells him something that makes Jincha's eyes widen and he goes to talk to Mao Mao saying that the concubine Goku's lunar cycle is at a standstill and the girl immediately recognizes that she is probably pregnant and so she is assigned to go back to the inner palace and she is happy because she will test the poisons again and returning there the same routine begins where she tests poisons every day while she was there she ends up realizing that the emperor maybe don't just be a naughty uncle while he's playing with his daughter and in the Prazer neighborhood that officer Mao Mao took to Casa Verdet ends up hearing that one of the three princesses is about to be bought and that makes his hair stand on end. And in morals I really want episode 21 I want to see what Mao Mao's life with Goku will be like again and I also want to see what N Swearin will have because she did it simply put your foot in. If you also want to see leave a like and subscribe I'll I'll see you in the next video.